Good afternoon or good night, depending on where you are. We're so excited to have you here live with us today at our webinar, Five Tips for a Successful User Test Setup. I'm Kendra. I'm the Executive Assistant here at UserBrain. And today your host will be Joelle. Joelle is our account executive. So just a quick info, at the end of the webinar, we'll be answering a Q&A. So we have a Q&A session. So, hi, Joelle. So please feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A chat box, and we'll be happy to answer them at the end. So if you have any questions, don't be shy. Just write them down in the Q&A box. OK, so now without further ado, please enjoy today's webinar. And Joel, your turn. Take it away. Thank you very much for that lovely introduction, Kendra. Thanks, all, for joining today's webinar. Um, as Kendra already mentioned, today's webinar is going to be about test setup, about different tasks, and we're going to talk different task types, uh, different test scenarios, and just see how we can make the best out of our user testing tool. My name is Joelle. I am the account executive at UserBrain, and I'm really happy to have you all here. Um, we have two different chat boxes. The one is a normal chat box, and the other one is the Q&A box. Please make sure to send the questions into the Q&A box so that Kendra can gather them. And then at the end, we will have a Q&A session in an in interview format. Please make sure to stay tuned until the very end because we have a, an exciting announcement to make at the end. So you might want to hear that. Without further ado, as Kendra already said, let's start with the webinar. And this is what we are going to be talking about. The first the first point on our agenda today is test set up. So we're going to go through some basic steps on how to use user brain to create your first tests. Then we're going to talk about task types, um, the different task types that we offer at user brain. We are going to see how we can create efficient tasks. We're going to find some resources that can help us uh, while we're setting up our tests. And finally, as Kendra mentioned, we are going to have the Q&A session. So yeah, really excited to get started. Let's start with test setup. So how do you set up a test at UserBrain? The good thing about UserBrain is that creating an account is really super easy and intuitive. The only thing you need is really email address and password, and then you are in. Here, this is the dashboard, which you can hopefully see on your screen. And this is where you get your tests, the end results, and where you create new tests, which is what we want to focus on today. When you want to create a new test, you would go here to create new test. And the first thing you do is you give the test a name. So I'm just going to call it user brain for demo purposes, uh, but you can call it whatever you want. The next step is the test URL. And this is where it gets interesting because the test URL can be some different things. It does not only need to be a website URL. This is, of course, the most traditional form of user testing, entering the URL of your website. And then this serves as the starting point, the landing page for the tester. Now, remember what our tool does is it records the whole screen. So the screen is recorded, the audio voiceover of the participant is also recorded, uh, but not only the browser is recorded. So really the whole screen of the participant is in the recording and you also hear their audio voiceover. So the participants, they're encouraged to speak along and they will voice their opinions, their experiences while navigating your test, depending of course on the task that you set previously. Now, why do I mention this? Because this is makes the tool a very open tool. You can set, of course, a live website, but what you can also do is you can test prototypes. This is very common. I would say it's 50-50 in our customers between like prototype testing and website testing. And testing a prototype is as easy as uploading the prototype link, setting it on public, entering the prototype link here. And then of course the tester, when they start the test, they're going to be redirected to the prototype. And then depending on your tasks, they can navigate and interact with the prototype. This is one use case. Another use case uh, is uh, Google search. You can really start as soon as entering the Google URL and really starting from the search engine to see where your website, your project is listed in the search engine or how easy it is to find the, for the tester. So you're not limited to your website URL. You can even start earlier in the search engine process. 
Once you have this URL set, so I'm just going to set our user brain website, then it actually starts with the test creation. Now, what we really try to focus on on user brain is to make the user experience usable or make a great user experience also for our customers. So you're going to see that the test setup is very intuitive. It's very easy to get started. But we also try to incorporate more advanced tools that more experienced researchers and designers need. So if it is one of your first tests, you can go here to templates. And you're going to see four templates that we have already created. Now, let's click on one of them, for example, the e-commerce uh, template. And you can see here that this is a test structure that we have already proven to be successful with task wordings that work. So this is really a good starting point. If it's your first user test, then feel free to guide yourself using one of the templates. These are uh, templates that you can edit, so you can really write whatever you need into the task and then just create the test that adapts best to your project. Although these are four templates that you can edit, we have a library of about 50 templates uh, for different scenarios, which we're gonna talk about later when it gets to our resources. Let's have a look at the different task types that we have. When you set up a test, it is a great option to have a mix between more qualitative oriented and more quantitative oriented test, test tasks. UserBrain is a qualitative tool, so we really focus on qualitative research rather than quantitative research like heat maps and clicks and so on. Uh, but still, we do integrate some more survey related options. And later on, we can have a look in, on, to how to combine the survey options with the original tasks. The original task is the task that just tells the tester what they have to do. What you can do when it comes to this test uh, task type is start with a scenario task. Sometimes a customer comes to me with a very specific idea of who their testing persona needs to be. I want people that work in this industry. I want people that often buy this item and so on. This can be necessary. More often than not, it's not necessary because the testers are really used to pretending that they are something or that they are interested in something or that they live in a specific situation. So use this and create a scenario task. The scenario task can be something like, imagine you are wanting to book your holiday and you have a family of four, uh, you want to take your dog along. Um, how easy is it for you to find a suitable hotel with our booking engine, for example, right? So the tester does not necessarily need to want to go on a holiday in the next few months. It is enough for you to just let them pretend that they do. And this can really serve as a scenario task, as an introduction, just so that the tester gets into the right mindset and so that they can perform the test. Now, we don't have a test task limit at user brain. So if you are in the time frame of five to 20 minutes, feel free to use as many tasks as you want. This makes it possible to really use the first task as just a scenario without having the tester doing something. It is also really good to use some of these questions when it comes to the task types. What is the first thing you notice? What can you do on this site? This serves two purposes. The first purpose is the usability purpose, because of course, when you have a landing page, when you have a home page, you want the person to immediately know who the target audience is, what you can do on this site. And if the tester has a hard time telling you that, then that points to usability issues. The other purpose of this, these introductory questions is to warm up the tester. Um, of course, all of our testers are used to speaking out loud, but it never hurts to have easier, more general questions in the beginning so that the tester kind of warms up into the test. So this is the original task type. What I always recommend is setting this box, ask participants if they completed the task successfully. Um, and this is because what the answer that the testers click on here is going to be gathered in the report at the end. So we do have a report that gathers everything that is more survey related. For example, the task success is also like a survey question. So this is going to be gathered in the report. It doesn't hurt to click it. 
And it just gives you a little bit more bang for your buck, gives you a little bit more quantitative data in addition to the video. What other test types do we have? We have the very traditional rating scale. Now, rating scales can be very helpful as a final task. Rate the overall usability of the website. How easy was it for you to complete this task? How likely would you be to use a website in this, like this in real life or recommend it? So the rating scale, you can set it from one to whatever you think is appropriate for your question. And it, this is also, as I mentioned, gathered in the report. Then you have the multiple choice tests, a task type and the single choice. Um, a single choice would be if there is only one possible answer, like for example, how many kids do you have? One, two, three, four. Multiple choice would be of the following items which have you purchased in the, in the last six months, right? So make sure to choose the correct uh, correct test type. It seems like a no brainer, but we do have sometimes tests where we see that there is a single choice question or a multiple choice question that cannot be answered because the tester mixed up these two. So just double check that you have the right task type here. The written response is also really helpful as a final survey because this is kind of the bridge between the survey and the qualitative testing. Um, the written response, the answer that the tester provides in the written response is also gathered in the report at the end. So if you, for example, come from an agency and you have a customer that really likes to have reports or quantitative data, then I would recommend set all of your questions as written response questions. Why not? It is basically the same as the original task type with the function that you can have the tester write something. Uh, you can have them write a short summary of what they said. You can have them write five adjectives that they associate with the website or anything that you see is valuable for you to gather on the report. So this is a written response question. And then the final one is the redirect function. The redirect function is probably one of my favorite functions because it's so versatile. So you can use the redirect function, for example, if you are testing your website against a competitor's website, or if you're an agency, your customer's website against a successful competitor's website. The redirect function sends the tester to the next website. It is included into the same test, so we won't be charging you extra. Um, and it just serves as a bridge between the first website and the second one. And then at the end, maybe you could set a single choice question or a rating scale to compare these two websites against each other. The same thing can be done with uh, prototypes. So if you want to do A-B prototype testing, then this is how you want to do it. You want to start here with the A testing prototype URL, and then you ask all your questions, you go through the rating scales, you go through the uh, survey questions, and so on and so forth. And then in the middle of the test, you redirect the tester to the B prototype, and then you go on and same procedure. You would just finish up with a survey, with a rating scale and so on. And then you can see which design appeals more to most of your testers. So these are the different task types. Talking about the task types, it's really important. Or the next uh, thing that we would like to talk about is how do we create efficient tasks? Um, for this part, let's focus specifically on the original task because this is the more traditional task type. Um, some pointers that we can have in mind when we create a user test. The first one, when you are creating a user test, try to really simulate a real life interaction between a person that would usually use your website, your prototype and said prototype or website. What do I mean by that? Instead of telling the tester, now you have to click on the red button and this will take you to this and that. And then in the corner, you're going to see a green button and you're basically guiding them through the website. So of course it's gonna work. This is not a usability test, this is more a system test. Um, and this is not what the tool is meant to be. When you want to have a qualitative study, when you wanna simulate a real life interaction between tester and website, you wanna give the tester exactly as much information as a real person has when they navigate your website. So ask yourself, how much information does a regular person have? It is, if it's very little, then of course the homepage has to give a lot of information. If the tester or the, per, sorry, if the person already comes with a very fixed idea, then maybe the information that they see on the first homepage can be less. 
but give this information to the tester, not more and not less. We have had some customers where the tester was not able to complete the test because the persona or the test was for a very, very specific group of people and the tester just lacked background information. How can you prevent that? By giving them the background information into the task. On the other hand, as mentioned earlier, try to avoid giving too much information because you really want to extract this information from the tester. You want to see how much the tester understands from just having a basic look at your website. And in the ideal case, they would get a pretty good idea from just seeing the first part of the website or just navigating a little bit and browsing back and forth of what it is. So the clue is in the, the, the key is in the balance, right? Don't give too much information, but also too little. Try to give as much information as a real life person would have interacting with your website. And that's uh, what is going to give you good results. When you finish setting up all of your tests, the next step would be checking it in the preview. So this is more or less what it's going to look like. Of course, the website is going to be in the background. Um, and this is what you are going to see here. You're going to see, uh, or the tester better is going to see uh, the task. Of course, they can minimize this so that they have full view on the test. As mentioned earlier, they would click, I have completed the task, hopefully, and then go to next step. And then you can have your multiple choice questions and so on and so forth. This is how it would look like on a desktop, and this is how it's gonna look in mobile. And when you're finished doing that, you just go to get testers, enter the demographic options and the screening questions, and that's that. So as you can see, we really try to make test setup as easy as possible. And once you get the hang out of it, your test can be made in less than five minutes, especially because they are gathered on the dashboard. You can always duplicate these tests and use them for future reference. So talking about test uh, types, of course, this is a lot of information. Where can I have access to resources that help me create good tests? So on our user brain website, this is open for everyone. You don't even need to be a registered customer to have access to these uh, resources. You would go here on examples. And I mentioned it a little bit earlier, we have over 50 user testing examples and templates that range uh, from e-commerce to uh, SaaS to banking, booking. So really a lot of different types of tests. And you can just see which test best suits your testing purposes, which is closer to uh, what you want to test and get some ideas from that. You can also search by tasks. Uh, for example, do I want my tester to create an account? Do I want them to search for a product? Do I want them to be able to contact the support team? And then you can also search by device. So let's, for example, have a look at a prototype test. Then here we have two prototype tests. If I click here, then I have both the test template and then the video that it translates to. So it really gives me a good idea of how this uh, test works out in real life. So feel free to extract information and even copy uh, complete task types from here. These are made by experts that really work and give you the best uh, user testing experience. This is one resource. The other resource we have is our blog. So here we have a lot of different articles uh, written by different UX experts um, about how to set up good tests, how to set up good screening questions, how to test prototypes, um, different tools, different uh, books that you can download. So this is really a good resource to get more information about the testers. Yeah, sorry, about creating tests. The final resource is your account manager. So in UserBrain, we have three different plans, the pro plan, the agency plan, and the enterprise plan. With the two larger plans, the uh, agency plan and the enterprise plan, you have a dedicated account manager. The account manager is someone who's not only going to be there for sales related question, but also for usability test related questions. You can discuss with them how to create better task types. You can have them review uh, your test setup. You can have them review your screening question. They will have a meeting with you to discuss your individual goals. So this is really a good resource for uh, you to get in contact with with an expert that it gives you a little bit more handholding throughout this process. So this comes with the agency and the enterprise plan. If you're interested in this feature, then please uh, let me know. I'm going to share my contact information at the end. 
Um, and then we can talk about uh, what plan best suits your testing needs. So yeah, what did we talk about today? I'm just gonna share the content again. We talked about test setup. You have seen that it's really easy to get from the starting point to finishing setting up the test. It's very intuitive, easy to do. We talked about the different task types, like the survey types, multiple choice and single choice questions, rating scales uh, and text responses, then the original task type and the redirect function. We had a look at how to create efficient tasks and just remember that you wanna give the tester as much information as they need, but not more than that. And we talked about the different resources, the blog, the library and the account manager. With that, we get to our fifth point of the program, which is the Q&A. So now I would love to invite Kendra back, exactly, because she's going to be gather or has already gathered some of the questions that you guys have sent in the Q&A box. If you haven't uh, sent any questions and you still wanna know something, please feel free to pop in your questions and Kendra will pick them up and then we can get started. So with that, I give the word back to our lovely uh, assistant, executive assistant, Kendra. And please, would you be so kind as to start with the questions? Thank you so much, Joel, for that amazing presentation. So as Joel already mentioned, now's the time. If you haven't dropped your questions yet, please just write them down. Remember, we have two boxes. We have the Q&A box and the chat box, and you can drop your questions into the Q&A box. So now's the time. But for now, we have some interesting questions, Joel. So first question, can I choose my target audience? Oh, yes, you can, absolutely. I'm just gonna share my screen and show you how to do that. So we got almost to the point to choose the target audience. So if you wanna have your uh, specific test, you would go here to get testers. And we have two phases of screening for participants. The first one is demographic options, which are options we have already pre-sorted, like country, age range, gender, device type. But if you wanna go more to specifics, you wanna click here on screening questions. And the screening question is, uh, or the screening question tool is something that you can customize. So you would set your screening question, then you want to give the system some different options and just tell, the algorithm which testers to approve or reject from the test. So depending on what they click on, they're going to be entering or not into your test. And this is how you can narrow it down and get your exact uh, participant. We had a screening question webinar two weeks ago. Uh, it went really nice. Uh, we had a lot of interesting input on how to set up screening questions. Perhaps we'll repeat that uh, webinar in the future. So if so, please have a look at the website and at the newsletter, and we'll let you know. Thank you for that good answer. Thank you. Next question we have is, can I invite my own testers? Yes, you can. The test setup is exactly the same. So there's really no difference between setting up tests for my own participants or for the user brain participants. Um, what you would have to do in that case is instead of going here uh, to the from user brain panel box, you would click on bring your own testers. This is a trial account. So I don't have a plan in which I can copy the link. But if you were on any of our subscription plans, pro agency or enterprise, you would copy the link here, send it to your participants, and they would just perform the test as if they were regular user brain participants. Good, thank you. And the next question is, when will I receive the results? It really depends a little bit on which panel you choose uh, and how many screening questions you set and how specific the screening questions are. Let's say you choose a large panel, UK, USA, Canada, something like that, and you don't set screening question or you just set a very unspecific screening question like, have you purchased something online in the last year? Which, you know, most of the testers are gonna click yes. Then you can expect your results to drop in within the first hour even. Maximum to the first 24 hours, you should get all of your results. If that does not happen if you are still waiting for results after 24 hours, our support team has an eye on that. So they will proactively reach out to you, let you know, first of all, that it's not working, why it's not working, and maybe even give you some pointers on how to adapt to screening questions so that more people can enter your test. But in general, the tool is really, really fast. Uh, you can even observe the testers uh, dropping in and, and getting your results back. So, so it, it's very efficient. It's a very efficient way of testing. 
Thank you very much, Joel, for those answers. I think that was all the questions for today. If you guys don't have any other questions. Oh, there, we just have two questions dropping in. <laughs> okay, it says, thanks for the presentation. I have two questions. If we want to test a prototype designed for mobile with specific dimensions, for example, 360 times 640, is there a way to make sure the selected users with the phones with these exact dimensions or how do you ensure that the prototype is shown correctly? Interesting question. Good question. In this case, I would use a screening uh, for that. So I would screen for screen size. We don't have a demographic option in which this uh, is already gathered. Uh, for now, mobile, we only do mobile testing with iOS. That is going to change soon. Soon we're going to integrate Android, but for now we only do it in uh, iOS. So for example, you can screen for exact phone type. Um, if you set mobile on device types, then you would go into screening question. You ask which uh, phone do you have? And then you go like from iPhone 6, 7, 8, and so on until uh, 13 or 14 now uh and then you can uh you can set which phone you want them to test on and ju by just clicking accept that and rejecting the rest um so if that works for you then that's how i would do that as i say android testing is coming soon so um stay tuned uh, for that but that is how i would screen if you really need to have a prototype displayed in a specific screen size thank you very much and the next question is, do you offer any discount for students? Uh, we, because of the pricing that we have, which is quite competitive, we don't have discounts for NGOs, MPOs, students, and so on. But I'm going to mention something of that earlier on. And just send me a message, and we can talk about uh, yeah, how to find the best pricing for you. And maybe there are some extra testers that we can drop in. Amazing. Thank you very much. Well, Joel, I think that was, that was it. Those were the questions, so back to you. Thank you very thank, much for participating. Thank you so much. Uh, there is one more thing that I would like to ask. Uh, I promised it at the beginning uh, that we have a little surprise for you all. Uh, so because of attending the webinar, we would like to offer you an extra extended free trial. Uh, we have a free trial already on the website. The free trial consists in two testers from the user rain pool and five test sessions that you can run with your own participants. But because of attending the webinar, we would like to double that. And we would like to give you four user brain testers. So then you have four user brain testers and five test sessions with your own participants, which is already nine videos, which is already a complete study, uh, completely for free. So what's better than that? Um, if you want to have that free trial, then just send me a quick message to this email here. That is my email, joel at userbrain.com. Just tell me that you assisted to the webinar, that you would like to have the free trial, and then I'll be glad to get in touch with you and add those extra testers onto your account. So I'm waiting for y'all's emails. Happy to have you here. Happy to reply to any other questions that you may have. Send me a message. I'll be glad to answer those and also to add those extra trial credits onto your account. Thank you very much for joining. It was very, very great to have you all here. Thank you again, Kendra, for hosting. Uh, we host these re webinars regularly, so I'm sure that there was going to be another opportunity to get in touch. And until then, have a great day, evening, or night. Bye-bye. Goodbye.